Hey guys, how are you? Welcome into a Thursday morning edition of the Daily Juice podcast with me, Matt Peralt, at Sports Talk Matt on Twitter to follow me. Betting Pros on Twitter is at Betting Pros. YouTube for the video by searching Betting Pros Audio wherever you get your audio podcasts. And BetMGM is the sponsor of this podcast with their $10 offer. New account, Juice150 at sign up. $10 bet, you win $150 automatically with that sign up code of Juice150 at BetMGM, BetMGM.com, or wherever BetMGM is up and operational in this country. Okay, 2-1 and one again last night. So back-to-back winning nights, a little 4-2 and two run over the last two days. We're going to stick with the same philosophy here. If it's not broken, let's keep going with it here. We were going 1-1, one 1-1, and one, one and, one, and I got kind of tired of that. So we went 2-1, and 2-1 and one the last two games. Marquette, much like Creighton the night before, not only do they cover, they win outright. They get a Big, big win for them against Villanova. Marquette, Saka Smart, I just think it's a good spot for him. It's a good school, good location. Big win for Marquette. And then we get the Boston Celtics right with kind of a miracle cover. Minus five. Number closed at six. They win by six over Charlotte. So we get that. And then we get wrong on the Wisconsin-Illinois game. It looked good for a while there, but then Illinois in the second half really poured it on. Coburn was just a monster in that game for Illinois. So we drop that one and we go to two and one on the night. All right. So here we are today. I have, and I'm going to warn you here on this. These plays are going to be very public. These plays are going to be very square. I just, I'm not worried about that right now. So you may see people in the YouTube comments or people may push back on this and be like, Matt, come on. This is really, this is very, very, Uh, public of you to be jumping on these games and everything could blow up in your face. And that's very possible. Okay. I'm betting half units on these games in basketball. We're heading towards a Friday. And then obviously we go with Saturday and Sunday into the Super Bowl live stream on Sunday morning for the Super Bowl. And you know, when we make bets and plays and picks and there's just so many prop bets. And like last year I made eight prop bets for this or eight bets in total for the Super Bowl. I'll probably be somewhere in that range again. Last year I only bet quarter units because I was so cold during the playoffs that it was just like I, I was trying to just stem the tide. I was bleeding out. I had to like I was betting, but I bet very small because of that reason. We've had a much better start to 2022 and for the postseason for, for betting. Uh, in the NFL, we are 17 and 10 so far here in 2022, up 5.5 units. So we're hitting at 63% right now in the NFL. So I don't want to destroy that. Our prop bet's not great. 16 and 21, that's only 43%. That's down 1.6 units. So overall, we're about we're up four units or so in college. Uh, sorry, in the NFL, we're up 3.6 units in uh overall right now and for the year in 2022 we're now up after last night we're up 2.5 units uh so far in 2022 so we're winning money here during the new year and nfl has been good to us so i don't want to completely blow that but we do have some some profits to work with here and some profits to play with so you know, NBA now is six and nine on the NBA. So we're you know, like one down 1.7 units in the NBA college basketball. We're chipping away. We were eight and 10. I think we're now we're uh, now we're 10 and 10 in the NBA. And we're close to breaking even here for college basketball over the last couple of days. So, you know, we've been we've been chipping away at that. So overall, you know, it's been a winning year so far in 2022 for us. But the NFL has been very good. So I don't want to completely blow things up. Hopefully do better on the props uh, heading into Super Bowl Sunday because it's going to be a big prop day. You know, I'll have a a bet on the side. I told you I'm taking the Bengals, but just at what number I'm waiting, you know, four, five, four and a half, five and a half, depending on what the number goes to. I'm just trying to get as many points as possible on the Bengals and then most likely do a same game teaser. I'm probably going to tease the Bengals up to plus 10 and then take the total down from whatever it is, 48 and a half, tease it down to 42, take the over. So those are bets I'm probably going to make for Sunday for the Super Bowl and then a bunch of prop bets. But That's not for tonight. Tonight, let's talk about one NBA game and two college basketball games. I'm going to be, again, very, very square. The Suns are at the Atlanta Hawks. The Suns have just been absolutely remarkable. They have won 11 straight basketball games. Now, they haven't covered every game, but on the road, they're 19 and four straight up. At home, Atlanta is 14 and 12 straight up. 
They've been okay of late, 7-3 straight up over the last 10 games, but obviously the Suns have not lost. They've won 11 consecutive games. Now against the spread, things have been a little bit different for the Suns. They're 28 and 22 against the number this year. Atlanta is the exact opposite. They are 22 and 28. Seven and three though, over their last 10, 13 and 13 at home. And look, this Suns team just is remarkable on the road. They're 15 and eight against the spread. 15-8 15-8 and eight against the spread is a crazy number. They're laying five right now on the road at Atlanta. Atlanta has been very good against the spread until we bet them with Toronto. At home last game, they were plus two and a half at home against Toronto because of the fact that Trey Young didn't play, who is still questionable for tonight. They lost by six. Okay, That snapped a seven-game cover streak and winning streak for the Hawks. Here comes this red-hot Suns team laying just five. Trey Young's status is up in the air. Whether he plays or not, I don't care. I want this below six, okay? I want this as a two-possession game, but I'm betting the streak. I'm just going to ride this here, and even though they've covered three of the last four, but three of the last six, they haven't covered in three of the last six. These numbers are a little inflated now, but again, on the road, at Atlanta, where they play tough at home. I mean, this lose this winning streak, the pros are going to be betting against the Suns on this road trip, okay? They're going to lose at some point. And maybe it's tonight. That's why it's a public and very square play. But I'm just going to ride it. I think five points. I think Phoenix gets it going. Their second unit is so darn good. I'm going with Phoenix. Minus five here. Chris Paul is playing on a different level right now, man. 47 assists to six turnovers over the last three games. Whether Trey Young plays or not, Atlanta can't stop that. Okay? They just can't stop that. I'll lay it with Phoenix. Minus five for the Suns. Again, it's public. It's square. Don't care. Phoenix, minus five. Okay, to college we go. Game of the night is out west here on the west coast. It's UCLA taking on Arizona. Now, UCLA has got some pretty big injury concerns that we have to address here. And, well... We don't know exactly what's going on yet. They've got an injury to one of their bigs, and Juzang, their star guard, has COVID. So both are expected back, but we don't know that for sure, okay? So you're talking about one of the best scorers and one of the best guards, Johnny Juzang, who is averaging, what, 18 points a game? So he has COVID, okay? So he may be cleared for Thursday. If he tests negative for COVID, he potentially could play here in this game. But Arizona got embarrassed just two games ago. They lost by 16 points on the road as two and a half point favorites against UCLA. If they lose this game, they will lose the tiebreaker and really have a tough time trying to win the division, or sorry, win the conference in the regular season, Okay. Up until then, they had been rolling. They lost to Tennessee by four, but they beat Washington, Colorado, Utah, Stanford, and Cal, winning by 25, 28, 18, 21, 16, like just blowing people out. Then they ran into UCLA, okay? Defensively, UCLA, very, very good. UCLA has won now six straight games. They have won uh, one, two, three, four, five, 11 of 12 they have won and they've covered the last four games Colorado minus three and a half one by six Arizona at plus two and a half one by 16 Cal laying 13 they won by 24 and Stanford laying 11 and a half they won by 23 three of those four games though were at home okay on the road this year UCLA three and four against the spread at home Arizona six four and one against the number overall Arizona is 11 seven and one the number is six and a half, okay? I like this up as high as seven, okay? I think you've got a big in question and a guard in question that are both main cogs and really important pieces for UCLA, and this is a must-win game for Arizona. It's a Thursday night, huge game. You know what it's like on college campuses on a Thursday night. You're going to get a jumping atmosphere. Arizona wants revenge. I think UCLA is walking into a buzzsaw here with having without having without having two of their best players even if they play they're not going to be a hundred percent i'll lay the six and a half points here arizona minus six and a half at home against ucla yes it's a public play i i I get it if you look at ken palm ken palm has this as a five point win for arizona but 
I, I think this is going to be a six point win for Arizona, six and a half, seven point win. They have it at 76 71 for Arizona. So the line should be five. It's inflated a little bit, I think, because of the public coming in on Arizona. I get it. If Juzang plays, I think you could probably, if the line goes to seven, seven and a half, maybe you come in. But if Juzang is not 100%, Coming off COVID, if you had symptoms and having some problems other injury-wise for UCLA, I, I I just think Arizona goes out here and puts up a big number. I will take the one extra possession juiced up because of the public money and the books are shading it towards the public. I'll take Arizona minus six and a half here for a half a unit. And for the third game on the night, we are going to go to Iowa and Ohio State. The total is 153 in this game. Now, Kempom has this total at 156, okay? This is an up-tempo, back-and-forth game. Adjusted defensive efficiency for Ohio State, they are 83rd in the country, according to Ken Palm. Iowa is 106th, according to Ken Palm, in adjusted defense. Effective field goal percentage, defensively, 168th for Iowa, 55th for Ohio State, a little bit better, but not much better turnover percentage 16 that's 308th in the country Iowa State I mean I sorry Ohio State does not turn people over and frankly Iowa doesn't turn the ball over they're second in the country just 12.5 turnovers per game on the other side Iowa's defense does turn you over 20.8 versus or turnover percentage 20.8 percentage percentage wise and then you've got 17.4 percentage for Ohio State that's 81st they're prone for turning the ball over letting Iowa run out having some scoring opportunities. We know the Hawkeyes like to jack threes here, but so is Ohio State. 40th in the country in three-point percentage. They are 13th in the country in two-point percentage, where Iowa gives up 32.4% three-point percentage. That's 125th in the country, and they give up 50.2 shooting percentage from two. That's 198th. Iowa didn't stop anybody. On the flip side, not much better, okay? 129th for Ohio State in three-point field goal percentage. You know Iowa's going to have open threes because they love to jack them. They're going to be able to hit them. And two-point percentage, they're 48th in two-point percentage. They send you to the line a lot as well. They foul. They they cause, no, they, they do turn the ball over. I'm going over. Over 153 for Iowa and Ohio State here. This game being played on Fox Sports 1. It's in Columbus. It's a big game. I just think we're going back and forth up temp up tempo. Excuse me. And I think we have an opportunity for points, points, points. 80 to 76 is the final score here for Ken Palm, what they're projecting. I think the line should be four here in this one. And I I mean I'm not really can't really hate on it too much if that's what it is. The line's five right now. I lean Ohio State minus five. I do. I just like the over more on the road. Iowa is five and three Ohio to the over Ohio state is four and five to the over, but their last two games have gone over and four of the last six have gone over for Iowa. Last two have gone over Purdue and Penn state that snapped a two game stretch stretch where they were under. And before that it was five in a row. So seven in the last nine have gone over and over the last 10 at seven, two and one for the, for the Hawkeyes to the over. I'm going to ride that trend. Both schools score, neither team playing great defense. We're going over 153 for a half a unit for Iowa and Ohio state. Okay. So this two and one, two and one, it's great. It's making money. It's not tremendous, but I'll take it. Winning is winning. Okay. Winning is winning. Slow and steady. Winning is winning. Would I prefer three, and know, sure, but winning is winning. All right. We are going Suns in the NBA. We're taking the Suns minus five at Atlanta. We're going over 153, Iowa and Ohio State. And I am laying the six and a half points with Arizona at home against UCLA. Square plays. I understand it. Doesn't matter. Taking it. My name is Matt Peralt. Every morning, it's the Daily Juice Podcast. Always being brought to you by BetMGM.